This game pays beautiful homage to animated cartoons from the 1930s and 40s in such a convincing and painstakingly sincere style that you'd almost be convinced this was something lifted straight from that era, right down to colour offset and dust and scratches. It looks so authentic because the designers used traditional animation techniques to achieve the style. They drew all the characters on traditional workstations on separate pieces of paper using early animation techniques. Although unlike traditional Golden Age animation, which then went on to paint these lines onto see-through cells, Studio MDHR scanned each of these drawings into a computer and cleaned them up and coloured them digitally. Now, this game is all about style over substance, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's see why. Firstly, let's look at references. Cartoons from early on in the Golden Age of animation, like Felix the Cat, Betty Boop and other Fleischer Studio cartoons have been the clearest influence for Cuphead. This means that characters will always be moving in some way, even when standing still. This is why characters tend to bob up and down in a resting stance, because why would you spend all your effort, as an animator, of bringing a character to life when it's just going to be static? It's like the opposite of Dragon Ball Z. Like in Fleischer cartoons, many characters in Cuphead are bendy and malleable, almost like big parade balloons filled with water. This has much to do with character appeal, which we'll come to in a bit. Before Disney came in and cleared the decks with its new realistic and aesthetically more pleasing animation process, this rubber hose animation was what animators used as the benchmark. What's interesting to note is the lack of easing, which is when a movement comes to a slow and gentle stop. It's not entirely absent, but most movements are often flat and snappy. This doesn't make them any less accomplished, of course, but it removes any sense that the character could exist in a more real-world setting. And this is why the sinister character designs are even more effective. The fact they're fully fictional and cartoony means they can do absolutely anything, like turn into a plane, and it wouldn't seem out of place at all. This also means that while you're quite happy fighting a genie, you've no idea if he's going to turn into a screen-filling monster. There's something about these rule-breaking transformations that are quite nightmarish, fueling that extra dread when facing these super hard boss fights. It's also interesting to note, get your notebooks out, that many of the boss fights' final phases end up with them changing into a vehicle or machine of sorts. And personally, I find these transformations really satisfying to watch, just as they're so smooth. Even though this rubber hose animation sometimes feels awkward to look at, the actual design of the characters helps their appeal. Appeal is how aesthetically pleasing it is to look at a character, either in their movement or in their character design or both, and can apply to protagonists in a sympathetic way so you're on their side, or to antagonists in an interesting way so you're not turned off from their sharp design. You'll notice how most characters in Cuphead all have circles or curves some way in their design, even in characters where straight lines should be, like in the robot, or the boat. Curves traditionally convey warmth and comfort in character design, while straight edges might convey a sense of danger or aggression, which makes the rounded, bouncy design of the bosses even more menacing. This contrast between the simple, happy design and their menacing actions is what makes the boss characters in this game, and indeed many characters from this era, much more unsettling. Also, curves make for some great undulating wavy motion. The boat and the genie are great examples here. It's almost hypnotic to watch. Not that you really get a chance to watch, mind. Yeah! What curves do mean, though, is that when a strong or directed action takes place, straight lines will be prominent. This gives a great sense of power and creates a cool dynamic contrast within the character. You'll still see Cuphead and Mugman retaining their floppy Mickey Mouse movement throughout most of the actions, though. What you'll also notice with these two is that you'll not often see their teeth. That might sound like an odd observation, but you'll nearly always see the boss character's teeth, so much so that it's almost a prominent feature. This is, of course, a very clear way to show aggression. That's only natural, you're fighting with them. Cupman and Mughead do bare their teeth when shooting, of course. Expect to see a lot of anticipation in Cuphead, because this game is all based around muscle memory. Now what I mean here is that the animation is so meticulous in Cuphead, 
that in order to keep a genuine animated look to the characters and experience, and not a game look, nothing you actually do to a boss will affect its animation, with the except to phase changes. And even then, they tend to round up to the nearest loop of animation. Health will be getting lower in the background, but nothing the boss character does will signify this. If every time you hit a boss and they recoiled, the frame of animation that they're currently in would suddenly need to snap to the recoil animation, and this sudden change would ruin the illusion that you're playing a cartoon. Although, this does actually happen occasionally. Hey, it's not perfect. And also, if you're eagle-eyed, you might see a slight pause where the game is deciding which move the boss will do next. Anyway, unless there was a specific set of transition animations for every frame to the beginning of the recoil animation, which would be terribly laborious and arduous and, let's face it, not fun, it's simply best to have the animation run through all of its frames into the next action, meaning that every boss is, essentially, on a big timed loop. So. When it comes around for a boss or one of its underlings to attack you, and because you have limited health, there'll be a long moment where it pauses after pulling back. We've discussed before that this is called anticipation, but it doubles up as a clue to when the boss will next attack. Although the design of the game is such that you kinda need to get hit so you can learn anyway, so you're bound to die a few times on a new boss. Projectiles and various elements that track you, occasionally including bosses, are the only variables, otherwise the boss battle would just continue even if you weren't there. Now, I said in my last video that additional animated flourishes are often my favourite bits of animation, but that's not quite so in this game. This time, I'm in love with bouncy squash and stretch and follow through, and those lovely transformations. Damn it, the bounciness is just so nice in this game. How Baroness von Bonbon jiggles around atop her monstrous castle is really fun. And like I said earlier, the genie's mouth and facial features at the end are all pinned to his bobbing up and down, so the mouth closes, followed by the eyes, then the head and the pipe, almost like a wave. You'll begin to see this everywhere, like in the rat's can machine. Also, I just quickly want to point out the really nice character turn here. You don't see many character turns as smooth and accurate as that, I tell you. The cigar has a real nice look to him as he's essentially just a big curve, and this allows for that nice big squash and stretch here. And the clown has some nice stretch as he jumps into his car. There are many points in the game where there's just some random transformations from one thing into something else, like the bird's head into a trash can, and the queen bee's knife and fork into a wand, but they never seem out of place. And I think probably my favourite transformation is the Zeppelin into the moon. Okay, let's quickly go over some other techniques as well. I really like the little smear on Baroness's shotgun here. It gives it a nice weight and rubbery movement to it. Similar to when the devil swings his trident. There's some similar fast motion blurs on the big cat's paw as he swipes, and there's also some multiple frames here to give an even greater sense of speed much like when the big frog turns into a fan. The rabbit in a hat has a really brief smear to quickly fill in the quick gap with his action. <laughs> Looks really terrifying when you pause it like that. Some quick action doesn't need smearing, such as the gravestone with some little motion lines. Some characters will vibrate violently if they've just performed a heavy or powerful action, such as the barrel here in the boat fight or the rat when he's pulling his levers. The frog's legs will jitter in a similar fashion here as well. Some characters blink with their pupils, which is unsettling, such as the boat and the slime ball. Speaking of pupils, when some characters go into a sort of overdrive mode, their pupils will go really long, like with the dragon and the castle. And some characters' eyes will spin if they're performing an action, like the carrot, queen bee and the dragon. And sometimes they'll change colour, like the flower and king dice. Or sometimes they'll be replaced with snakes, like the mermaid. There's a fantastic video hosted by Jake Clark from Studio MDHR, and he goes through his design process for the boss characters, and it's really interesting to watch. And he explains through all these references and uh, how he builds from a few keyframes into really smooth animation. 
This game took around four years to make, and it's this studio's first game, and there's so much passion and soul into every part of it. I sincerely hope that this reborn animation philosophy begins to make its way into more areas of game design, because it's not necessarily the understanding of animation's history that's required to make something look nice like Cuphead, but an understanding of how to make moving things interesting, enjoyable, and fun to look at. Sure, you can apply a classic idea to a new skin on a 3D model and that'll do the job, but you'll nearly always be able to tell when something's had more heart and soul poured into it. Thanks for watching. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to see a video more than once every two months. You get some cool perks, and consider sharing this video too. Comment below on what your thoughts are on Cuphead's animation, and have a lovely Christmas.